Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 19th of October with me Patrick Munley. In the US, Joe Biden's lead in the opinion polls has been narrowing just slightly over the last week. President Trump will hope that this Thursday's second and final TV debate in Nashville presents an opportunity to score some points off Biden. This is perhaps the last big opportunity to do this before the November 3rd election. Any narrowing in the opinion polls will probably be taken as a negative by risk markets, increasing as it does the chance of a contested election. This comes at a time when the financial markets are priced towards a benign outcome in the form of a democratic clean sweep. The debate comes against a backdrop of rising double dip fears. And what stands out currently is the divergence between Europe, the US and China. Europe is priced towards a sharp slowdown. US markets are caught in the middle, while Chinese markets are priced for a V-shaped recovery. In terms of data, next week it's going to be largely in the form of positive housing data. It shouldn't really be a game changer for the US assessment, nor should the Fed's beige book. However, initial claims could receive a little more attention after a poor outcome last week, and speculation could grow that the October non-farm payrolls released right after the election could actually be negative. Unless fresh fiscal stimulus comes to the rescue, this cocktail of data and events looks slightly risk negative and dollar positive. So from a technical perspective, still tracking uh, this dollar decline. Um, as we pulled back last week, we didn't uh, take out the sport area at the 92.50 uh, discussed in last week's session. And instead, buyers came in there and we have found some support. So now what we're looking at is a, a new equality objective at this 95.70 to 96 area, this prior support zone, now to act as resistance in an equality move that will should set up a wave four peak and then looking for that wave five decline into the psychological 90 area. So as long as we hold the 90, uh, last week's lows at 92.95, look for a grind high into, these, into the elections uh, in beginning of November, and then we'll be looking for that next leg to the downside. In terms of uh, Eurozone, broadening lockdowns across Europe have taken their toll on European asset markets and taken some of the steam out of the Euro. The macro focus this week will be on the October PMIs released Friday, where the services index is expected to fall again, but manufacturing should just about keep the Eurozone composite, uh, the composite figure above 50. There's a whole host of ECB speakers due again this week, but it seems European fixed income markets certainly have received the message of the double dip. Here, German bond yields have recently made a new low for the year. Progress, or lack thereof, on Brexit will also play a role in euro pricing this week, as will Monday's OPEC Plus meeting. There have been periods this year when cyclical currencies, including the euro, have rallied alongside oil, throwing focus on whether OPEC Plus members will dial back from planned output increases next year. Uh, if better Chinese data activity prompts another leg lower in the Chinese uh, in the dollar one, uh, then we could, could see some potential early support this week in terms of the euro. From a technical perspective, tracking the uh, potential five wave advance here, and we're in a wave four corrective pattern Certainly that, will, uh, that view will receive confirmation if we can take out this 116. But as we hold uh, this 117 area, there is still the potential that we've actually seen the three wave decline here and that we have our fourth wave low in place and we could see a move up to test this 122 target. However, the base case for me at this stage is that whilst we hold the 118.20 as resistance, I'm looking for a test now of the 115 to 114.50 area where, uh, again, looking for this um, election low in terms of the euro and a, and a high in terms of the dollar. So I'll be looking at long positions, then targeting the 122. In terms of the UK, uh, despite Prime Minister Johnson's comments about the UK government's willingness to go for the Australia-style trade deal, the reaction in sterling and the UK rates market was fairly limited as the UK Prime Minister did not call for an end to negotiations. One can interpret the latest comments as a face-saving exercise characterised by tough talk but the continuation of negotiations beyond the UK government's self-imposed deadline of October the 15th. While sterling fell in response to Johnson's comments, 
The scale of the currency decline was relatively muted considering that no risk premium has been priced into the currency for some time. If the market credibly believed in the threat of a no-deal Brexit, sterling would have traded materially lower. And what I'm looking for now in terms of the UK and EU trade negotiations, they're likely to continue next week with uh, rhetoric coming out from both sides. On the data front, we should see a modest uptick in both headline and core UK September CPI released on Wednesday from the rather depressed levels. But with price pressures remaining low, the extension of QE in the November BOE meeting looking as a done deal, and the odds of negative rates to be primarily driven by the outcome of the uh, UK-EU trade negotiations, the UK data should have limited impact on sterling. What I'm looking for now is for sterling to continue to trade within its range of the 126.50 to 130.50 area. I'm looking for a slow grind into uh, projected ascending trend line support now coming in at this 127 handle before then we have the potential to retest price cycle highs uh, 134.85 en route to an ideal 136. Dollar yen remains trapped in very tight ranges and certainly is trading like a non-correlated pair with the global recovery. It's hard to see uh, that changing unless the threat of a contested election becomes more real, where traders would then even choose to avoid the dollar as a safe haven currency. Flow reports suggest a large amount of foreign bond buying by Japanese residents in the last reporting week, suggesting a 105 level remains an attractive area to go into the overseas assets. Let's see whether those purchases are repeated in this week's Ministry of Finance portfolio flow data. Uh, the Japanese data calendar is light, but should culminate in another minus 0.4% year-on-year uh, reading in core CPI, confirming very little progress in Japan's multi-decade battle against inflation. From a technical perspective, as we hold 105, I'm looking for, to, uh, for an equality move, initially testing sending uh, trendline support 106.60 en route to an ideal 107 test. A breach of 105 would certainly open a uh, move down to 104.35 before another attempt to move higher. In Australia, the combination of Australia-China trade tensions and rising chances that the Reserve Bank of Australia will add more stimulus soon are proving to be a toxic mix for the Aussie dollar. I'm in an already unsupportive environment for risk assets. On the first factor, it's still too early to understand how much the Chinese ban on Australian coal was indeed part of Beijing's protectionist agenda or whether diplomatic tensions were the main motive. Should the latter be true, the threats of more Australian exports being targeted may be a narrative for the coming weeks and may undoubtedly weigh on the Australian dollar. Looking at the second factor, the RBA Governor Lowe's hint about the extension of bond purchases um, could prove to be uh, more impactful. And, um, and many think that a move will come at the November 3rd policy meeting. Australia's 10-year yields dropped below 75 basis points for the first time since April on the back of the announcement. But there's still likely some sizable downside potential for rates markets if markets fully buy into the prospect of the, RBA, of the RBA buying 10 year bonds. Next week, uh, we will get clarity with the minutes of the RBA policy meeting released on Tuesday and a speech by Deputy Governor Guy DeBell. All in all, the Australian dollar now seems highly vulnerable to more risk appetite contractions really more than any other G10 currency at this stage. So from a technical perspective, as we hold 72.40 cents as, uh, as a potential uh, B wave high, I'm looking for an equality move down to test 68.35. And again, we've got this date uh, towards the back end of this month, uh, the beginning of November, where we should see a, a shift in terms of sentiment across the board reflected in the dollar. But for now, certainly, as we hold 72.40, I look for a break of the 70 cents level to set up this quality move down to 68.40. As always, uh, please join me on Thursday for my live market analysis session where I go into more details about the charts. And uh, as always, have a, uh, a profitable and safe trading week ahead. Thanks very much.